In this video, we are going to cover three things that can help you improve your golf game that don't require lessons or a swing change. And the best part is you can start doing it right now. Hi, I'm Eric with Pursuit for Park Golf, where we help you improve your game and enjoy golf more. If you've ever wondered if you can improve your golf game without improving your swing, this video is for you. I've been working on my game for years, and I want to share with you three things that I've learned along the way that really helped me improve my game that required no lessons. The best part is you can do it right now. I will use a real world example, and also stick around to the end where I'm going to share additional resources, which are also linked in the description below. We need to start off by understanding our game. How far do we hit the ball? What is our shop shape? What kind of common miss hits do we have? And when we miss, what direction does it go in? For example, I tend to hit my irons thin lately, and I hit a push fade, so I will almost always miss to the right with an iron. We need to be honest with ourselves when we do this. We're comparing our own game, not other people's. What are your strengths? These are the things that you're good at. Perhaps it's bunker shots or chipping or even your driver. These are the type of things that you want to rely on while playing to help you get a better score. We also need to understand our weaknesses, what we're not so good at. These are the things we want to avoid while we're playing around on the course. Be specific about it. Everywhere and everything is not an answer. We need to know because these are the shots or situations we want to avoid while we're playing. They'll just lead to trouble. Higher scores. Course management is where we take what we know about our own games and then apply it to the course we're about to play to come up with a high level strategy of what we want to do during the round. First, we want to create a high level plan on how we want to play a hole. You can do this from memory if it's a course that you've played frequently or use something like Google Earth to check out a course you haven't played or to visualize things better, even get measurements. What we want to do is take what we know and apply it to that specific hole to work out the best way for us to advance the ball without getting in trouble. We want to use what we know about our strengths, weaknesses, and ball flights for this process. For example, number 18 on my home course is a par 5. It's straight off the tee and moderately wide. The right side is a hazard, and the left side has a wooded slope where you can lose balls. There's a stream that must be carried with your second shot, and there is also a pond fronting the green. My current strategy is to tee off with my driver, hit my second shot across the stream, and then go for the green in three. That's all it takes. Years ago, my strategy was slightly different because I didn't hit the ball as far or solidly. I would still hit driver off my tee, but then I would lay up short of the stream, get across with my third shot, and then approach the green with my fourth. On the course, we try to execute the plan we came up with. However, we also need to adapt on the fly because the plan rarely survives contact with a golf ball. We need to take into account such things as how we've been hitting the golf ball, what the weather conditions are like, what kind of lie do we have? Are we in the rough or a bunker? For example, using the par 5 I, that I described earlier, I played recently and we had winds around 17 miles an hour with gusts that were much higher, and the hole was playing into the wind. I hit a solid draw into the left side of the fairway, but the wind killed my distance. On a normal day, I could clear the stream with either my 5 iron or a wood. Not today, though. I decided to lay up and punch the little 9 iron. It was a nice draw, but a gust of wind made it suddenly curve way left. It was kind of funny to watch. I end up in their left rough and the green is not an option for my third shot. I punch a partial six iron that clears the stream and is dry. I have a wedge into the green which I catch thin but I get it near the hole. Two strokes later I have my bogey. The other guys in my groups, all better golfers than me, tried to clear the stream with their second shots and all ended up in it. It wasn't pretty or sexy but that bogey won the hole for me and some pocket change. Do you have any course management tips or examples of how it's helped you during a round? If so, leave it in the comments below. Now, course management can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. It all depends on where you are in your golf game and what suits you. I will share some helpful course management resources later in this video, and the links will be in the description below. The last topic today is letting go. It may sound odd, but how many times have you had a bad hole or a bad shot, got frustrated, and it just spiraled out of control? I know what it's like to let a bad hole or score get you frustrated on the course. Things spiral out of control and it's just not worth playing. I've walked off the course because of poor holes in the past. I even quit for a number of years because my scores did not meet my expectations. Letting go has been the most difficult lesson that I've learned over the years, but it's also the most important one. Focusing on the next shot and not letting what just occurred bother you is beneficial. For example, recently I had a string of bad holes during a round. I was plus five for a 10 on a par five. I had a quad and two triples. A perfect recipe for disaster and a very high score if I let things spiral under control. 
Instead, I kept my cool, didn't let it bother me, and I was plus five and shot a 41 on the back nine. I'm not saying the final score is great or anything like that. However, it would have been much worse if I had lost my cool. I'm actually proud that I was able to turn the rest of the round around. As I promised earlier, I will share some resources that I have found very helpful over the last few years. Two channels I really enjoy for course management and letting go are Not A Scratch Golfer and Golf Sidekick. They have a number of videos that touch on both topics while playing a round of golf. One of my favorite books on course management is Butch Harmon's Playing Lessons. In this book, he takes three golfers with different skill levels through an 18-hole course. He explains the course management that you should use and provides tips along the way. One of my favorite books for getting better at golf is John Sherman's The Four Foundations of Golf. He covers expectations, course management, practice, and the mental game. It's one of my favorites. A book I found very helpful when it comes to letting go is I Found the Golf God by Dory O'Rourke. She covers a lot of topics about how to let go and not let frustration ruin around. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button.